What's up, gang? Going live on Facebook and Instagram. How's everybody doing? Happy Tuesday. Super excited to jump on with you guys and kind of dissect my Bod Pod results. Um, especially for those of you really working on those last kind of like 10 pounds, you know, um, kind of speaking to my leaner clients who are working towards their own goals. Guys, listen, I am all about supporting your goals, whether you have 100 pounds to lose or you have five pounds to lose. I get it. I want to be the best version of myself, okay? And so I want to support the best version of you. But I think that we all have to have realistic expectations of what we can achieve depending on the age of our body, <laughs> you know, um, our input versus our output and kind of all that stuff. And I, you know, I feel like women put so much worth in the number on the scale and it's just the worst place to track your progress, especially when you don't have much room for progress. You know, when you're looking at, you know, optimizing your health at that last five or 10 pounds or whatever it may be. So if you're watching this on Facebook or Instagram, I encourage you use the share button right now. Start a watch party. I want every one of your friends and family to see this information because it can be really powerful. So this week I did a bod pod. You're like, what the heck is a bod pod? So there's a lot of different ways that you can measure percent body fat. So that's kind of what a bod pod is doing. It's looking at your body composition. And when I'm working with a leaner client who has, you know, kind of big goals, I always suggest, listen, we got to figure out where your percent body fat is. What's your body composition? Are you skinny fat? Where, you know, you're, you're light on the scale, but also light on the muscle, head fat for sure. Um, um, yeah, here I am. Okay. Or are you super lean? Like your percent body fat is really low and you have body dysmorphia. <laughs> you don't have any fat to lose. You just have this unrealistic ideal of what you think you should be. I don't know. You could be either. You could be either. Or. So determining your percent body fat is a really great place to go. I love a bod pod. Super accurate information. Usually you're going to find that on a university, kind of an educational setting. So if you live around a big school, big college, um, you can kind of find those. Google bod pod in Nashville. Google bod pod in San Diego. Um, another really great resource is a DEXA scan. Regardless of where you live, there is a DEXA scan in your area. That's the scan that we use to determine bone density, um, but it also determines body composition in a very accurate manner. So um, you can order that yourself, believe it or not. We can be our own health advocates. We can order our own labs. We can order our own scans. We might have to pay for it, but it's not that, it's not that costly. So that's another option if you don't have a bod pod in your area. Um, there's also kind of like a, a dunking booth, which, you know, basically they dunk you, you hold water, you know, uh, that one's a little bit scary. I don't think people do that as much. So bod pod, DEXA scan are really kind of the two big ones. Um, and, and I want to kind of show you my results over the last basically 12 months. Is that right? So this is, well, really over the last probably 18, 19 months. And, and I think it's very interesting to look at my trends. And that's what we are looking at is your trends, okay? Now, this is me and who I am. I'm pretty eddy steady at about 140 pounds. My red light number is 144. I really try to keep myself within that range. If you are part of the lean program, especially the monthly membership, you know all about a red light number. And we want to keep ourselves within that red light number. It's how we maintain our progress 100%. So over the next uh, or, or over the course of the last 18 months, I've kind of been like in and out of my, you know, all in and, and a little bit more lax and all in a little bit more lax. And these kind of really show three separate areas in which I kind of went all in, but went all in in kind of a different way. It's very easy to look at these results 
because I'll show you my percent body fat went from 24% in April to 21% in November um, and then a, a year later back to 23%. So it's very easy for me to look at this and go, oh man, you suck. A year ago, you were in such a better place. You were 21% body fat, which I mean, yeah, I was in a better place with regards to that. Now you're 23% body fat. You, you gained a ton of weight. Well, no, I didn't, okay? Because let's look at those numbers. When we look at weight, and we look at my first weight in April was 35.5 at 24% body fat. My second weigh-in was 136. Did I say 135? I think I said 125. 135. I'll never be 125, that's for sure. 136 at 21% body fat. So look at that, okay? Actually gain, or this is 139. I can't even read. Gain four pounds but went down in, in body percentage. And then here I am today, you know, 135 and back up to 23% body fat. So again, if I'm looking solely at the scale back in November, when I actually reduced my percent body fat, I'm failing, okay? Because I gained four pounds. And so I suck, all right? Because I'm just looking at the scale. But in reality, when I look at my body composition, I didn't gain four pounds of fat. I gained four pounds of muscle. So here's the deal. To all of you women reaching out to me and saying, Amanda, I want to build muscle. I want to get stronger. I want to look more physically fit. Well, guess what? Sometimes that's not weight loss, okay? Sometimes you don't get to lose weight to be physically fit. Now, I can tell you when I'm 21% body fat, I am like, lean and mean. I mean, shit, when I'm 23% body fat, I'm lean and mean, you know? But I have to be ready to accept the fact that I might be 140 at 21% body fat. And ultimately, that's what happens. If you look at my fat-free mass, my muscle, I went from 102 pounds of muscle, tissue, everything but fat. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into that. But you, you predict that it's muscle gain to 109, back down to 103. And I will tell you, for five months leading up to this measurement, when I was 21% body fat, I did a progressive overloading strength training program. Like I did a program in which I was trying to put on muscle. And guess what? I did, okay? I did, I was strong, I was lean, but I was more in weight. So, it's important. And so what I'm trying to show you guys with these measurements, because I, you know, I went with I, I went with someone to the bod pod once and their, you know, their measurements had shifted. And I mean it was, it was like minute, you know. I mean, when when you look at the difference between yes, 24 to 21 to 23, I mean, those are kind of big changes, but look at my fat mass. My fat mass barely changed. Yes, I did drop, obviously, dropped fat during this uh, under, you know, this this really intense workout that I was doing. Um, but did I really gain a ton of extra fat? You know, going from 21% to 23? No, it's like one pound. So that's the thing, guys. Again, I'm talking to you ladies out there that are obsessing over 10 pounds, 5 pounds, obsessing over two or three pounds like you're what are you doing your life is so much better than that what is one or two pounds what is two or three pounds it is insignificant you know so it's important that when you're looking it's you got to collect a lot of data is is again i'm gonna i'm gonna stress that a lot of data look at your measurements look at the scale look at your percent body fat you know, look at your fat mass versus your fat. You got to look at all, all of the things and you've really got to look at what are you doing and what results are you creating, okay? Um, and again, I just think that this is a really, you know, I was really excited when I did this in November to show you guys, like, look at me. I gained five pounds and I'm leaner than I ever have been. Love, love showing you that. 
I got a girl in my email that I'm going to share her results who sold zero weight loss, obviously pissed, ain't happy with the lean program when you go through it and you see zero weight loss. And then she sends me her, her before and after pictures and I'm like, I put them side by side and I'm like, girl, what are we missing here? What, what, what are we not seeing? And I sent it back to her and she's like, well, shit, I should probably put those pictures side by side. Yep, that's a pretty big difference. Yes, it's a big difference. Who cares about the number on the scale? Oh, yeah. So, um, let me know what questions you have about percent body fat. Um, I'm going to go through because I see a bunch of questions um, on. I'm going to go through Facebook and then go through Instagram. Paul says, looking good. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> it kicked me out of Instagram. Ooh, I hope you, I hope you found it. I know Instagram didn't like me. Um, it's because I got a call. Why somebody's calling me? How are you measuring percent body fat? I have fat calibers and body composition scales. So yeah, I mean, if you want to do the pinch test and you pinch all these different, I mean, I feel like I don't think that that's a very yes, it's very accurate, but there's a lot of variables for distraction. So I'm using a bod pod. That's what I used here. These are like my official results from my bod pod. Um, an in body scan is also another option, but I, I'll show you. Okay. So an in body is great at showing you your trends. Okay. But it's not as accurate as a bod pod. It's not as accurate as um, a DEXA scan. Um, and, and I'll show you comparison. I did the in body on November the 25th. Now I will say this is before Thanksgiving. I very well could have, I very well could have gained how much was my, my percent body fat went from, um, 27 pounds of fat to 31 pounds of fat. I, I could have done that over Thanksgiving. That's, that's feasible, baby. But I did this on November the 25th. I did this one December the 7th. So about, I don't know, what is that, 10 days? I suck at math. Um, but here, my, my weight was 136. So about the same. I was a little bit lighter on the bod pod. My percent body fat was 19.8, which is definitely a lot different than 20. 3.3. Okay. So it definitely measured my percent body fat lower. And, and I do feel like these tend to underestimate body fat, maybe a little bit more than the, the bod pod. Again, not making it a bad way to track your trend, but you know, the, the numbers are a little bit off. Um, and my fat mass was 27 versus 31. So kind of the difference, you know, between the two comparisons. Um, I can also look back in my measurements. So on November of last year, when I did the in body and the bod pod, they were very similar. So um, it showed me at 19.9% body fat and 36 pounds, um, which I actually weighed more, um, 39 pounds and 21% and body fat. So again, this was probably a little bit um, lighter than what it is. So again, the bottom line is, is that if you have, if you're working on that last little bit, take, take photos. Okay. Look at those, track your progress through photos, through percent body fat, through measurements, through the scale. You got to look at all the parameters. Okay. And then the last thing you need to assess is, is this sustainable? You know, is this sustainable? What I was doing to get to these numbers in November, it wasn't sustainable. It wasn't a way I like to work out. It didn't fit my schedule effortlessly. So I shifted and went back. And so, you know, this is kind of where I fall. Um, and, and I think that that's, again, a big conversation. Again, when you're looking at your end goal, is losing five pounds sustainable? You know, it's again, it's like the, the people in my emails. I'm like, listen, yes, I will support your effort to get to an 11. If you want to be an 11, I will be there. But that means no alcohol, no treats, no 80-20, no missed workouts, no late night outs. I mean, 
it means that you go all in 100% and you live that life 100%. And to me, that's just not fun, okay? I'd rather be maybe like an eight <laughs> and live and have some margaritas, chips, and salsa, you know? So you got to figure out what's best for you. Um, do you trust the weight scale that you stand on and measure? So Alicia, I kind of I kind of answered that. Let's see what questions you guys have on Instagram. I know it kind of kicked you out. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Let's see here. Any questions? I pulled up three DEXA scans um, places and they want a doctor's order. Call them, call them and see, because a lot of times they'll have like a, a fitness, like a, a health option that you can ask for. And if not, call your doctor, get an order, okay? See, I mean, usually you can have those done yearly to check your bone health. Um, uh, happy, healthy deal finder says make so much sense. Thank you. We need to retrain our brains. I know this is why I hate scales. I agree. So glad you're sharing this information. Preach mama. Lindsay, she knows. She knows that one time I freaked out over the bod bod. I might be talking about you, Heather. <laughs> All right, guys. I love you. I want to help you reach your goals, but I want you to do it in a sensible way. And I want you to have realistic expectations and I want you to learn to love your body first and foremost. You have to be happy with, you have to learn to love yourself where you are right now and move forward, okay? Because hating yourself right now, because you, hey, let's face it, guys, you may never move forward, okay? So love yourself now and then work on the things to move forward um and go from there all right love you happy tuesday share with your friends and family especially like your skinny friends who are always trying to lose weight <laughs> i like to pick on them today talk to you later bye